Hello everyone, it's Jack. I'm back. I was gone for a whole fucking week uh, for a wedding. Good times. And I'm suddenly real worried. No, okay, yes. For some reason I got real worried that I somehow didn't save and I couldn't remember where we last left off. But we are fine. We, I think. Yeah, no, because the mission is still to grab the, the fourth object of power. Beautiful. Um, there it is, there's the map. Yes. Okay, I remember now. Yes, this way. Yeah, yes. Because we're going into the Panopticon. Sorry, again, it's been like close to two weeks, so I'm a little, I'm playing the catch up a little bit. Did I miss something here? P6 is what the Bureau calls Dylan. Oh, that's his not good. Been breached. Has the Hiss found him? Are you there with him? Can you protect him? Well, the screen just went red and died, so that's probably not a good sign. Notice. All oh, right, I already used the light switch cord here. Because this is the fire break. And we met the head of uh, containment. The Panopticon. Dylan's close. But that object of power might wreck this place before I find him. Yeah, I guess we'll just keep going forward. And there it is. I just, it's, it's purely because of how the anomalous objects work in this universe. I love that you'll just walk by a containment cell and it's just an empty room with a single very mundane thing in the middle. And like that thing's probably super dangerous, but it's still really funny. Like, okay, that's a picnic basket, come on. I want to know what the picnic basket does. Something was, dear God, I think Yogi Bear might be about he wants that picnic basket. That is just a fan. A toy mallet? <laughs> God, even worse, Harley Quinn. Something went wrong with the Bureau's plan to make Dylan the next director. Marshall made it sound like it was all Dylan's fault, but how much of it was what the Bureau did to him? Probably quite a lot. I don't think she's telling me everything. No. What is that noise? Oh, that's what that noise is. Hello. Bye-bye. Please go away. I don't like that. Oh, he's still there. Sir, please leave. Excuse me, sir. You can't be up here. Just 
something's loose. Either that or this was out of use. Oh no. Oh, this poor bastard. What are you doing in there? Oh, thank God. So Fridge duty. My ship replacement never showed up. Can you help me? Damn. I can't. I'm sorry. There's an emergency. I'll come back. I promise. Okay. Okay. Just don't forget. I can't stare at this thing much longer. I'll totally come back for you, my guy. See ya. It's never not fun. Hmm. Maybe this one's just actually not in use, which makes me wonder what's up with the other one. Someone's shooting. Poor fucker I saw on the monitor out there. Real nope, can't go that way. Okay, so yeah, we're just gonna go out here. The Benikoff TV. I think the explanation of what it does should be would be more obvious if the Hiss bodies didn't do this already. But this is not Hiss, this is just what the TV does. Objective power. I need to cleanse it. I think it's fucking with you.
you can fuck off. That thing was Salvador, the head of okay. TV. Hold on, let's see. Another object of power on nuts. Just don't want to risk these things vanishing on me when I take the object of power. Babysitter. That's funny. Levitate superhero over the obstacle. Newsflash APB. The hiss static hit. Oh god, that's not good. Dealt with the TV. Now I can find Dylan. The hiss is trying to work its way towards the board. That's interesting. Like fuck the board, but still. Like the board is sketchy as shit, but I also kind of need them. Yeah, I suppose that would have been too much to ask for that to just be normal. Some very non-Euclidean geometry going on in here. How do I leave? Oh. Down. I'm an idiot. Presumably the oldest house will fix that in time, eventually. Oh, hello. Is that a swan boat? What does the swan boat do? How has the swan boat driven someone insane? Oh, we got notes. Is that like a... Did I just hear giggling? What the fuck? I didn't sign up for creepy children. I was gonna say, because that looks like a... half-inflated helium balloon. 
Like the helium's slowly slipping out of it. Do I have anything on that? Anchor, fan, globe, mannequin, paper lantern, plastic tree, post box, refrigerator, rubber duck. No, don't have anything for the balloon. Weird. Hopefully I'll find that soon because that's very eerie. Same with the swan boat. I think the swan boat is just weird because it's like the biggest altered item we've seen thus far, I think. Like maybe tied with the carousel horse. I almost walked away thinking there was nothing in here, but there's a crowbar. I think it's a crowbar. Yeah, it's a crowbar. It'd be very funny if that thing's, like, really good at breaking into shit. Really? So close. Jesse, look at the warning signs. Some shit went down. This place is so covered in red flags, I'm surprised you can see through them. That's a giant red flag. Oh no, he looks like a serial killer. We need to get back. I have to see my brother. Yeah, I don't have a level six, damn it. Okay. Well for starters, let's check out his lovely little uh, abode here. Totally not slasher killery at all. Oh look, your name's carved into the wall. That's nice. Oh, I guess it's actually glass. Sorry, there's so much broken glass it's hard to tell what's intact. Also, clearly the transformations have done enough a number on this place. Hmm. Unless there's something up on these catwalks. I don't think there's much here, so unfortunately. At least not that I can get to at this moment. Everything else is probably just locked behind that door. Fridge guy. I miss my desk. Oh, I guess I haven't uh, done enough in the main story to progress the fridge quest. I'll be here, like always. Come on, let me open the menu. There we go. Fridge duty. 
Okay, no, I guess now I just have to make my way back up there. God damn it. Oh, and it's one of these fucking things, too. Still a lot of guys in here. Including a mini boss. Hello. using flight next to other objects they started hovering with me that's cool Let's see am I on the wrong end of four yes So I gotta remember there's just a control point right next to this place. Out of here. The door can only be opened by the Panopticon supervisor. That's Langston. If he's still around. Langston. Yeah, I know him. I'll go ask him if he can get you out. Please hurry. My eyes. They can't. They can't. Hey, calm down. Just focus. What's your name? Focus. Right. My, my, my name's Philip, and... Good I man, Philip. So oh, this poor fuck. Just hang on, Philip. This is actually, like, brutal. Especially, like, I don't know about y'all. I'm definitely the kind of person, as soon as someone tells me not to blink, I blink. Watching a refrigerator and very rapidly losing it. Philip. Oh shit! I forgot about fridge duty. <laughs> no! Holy shit, Langston! For over a day. The hiss, the Benikoff TV. Considering the number of things I'm juggling, man, I think it's. Listen, it's fine. 
We just need to get him out of there. He said you'd be able to... Langston, the hiss have not been at a thing for over a day, at least not as far as I'm aware. Holy shit. Oh shit, I forgot about fridge duty. Fridge is behaving erratically. Ocular contact is the only thing that seems to placate it. If we don't have someone in there watching it 24-7, people will die. I'll figure something out. I'm pretty good with these things. Being pretty good with altered items isn't standard bureau procedure, man. Well, who's the fucking director, Langston? Nope, didn't mean to. I mean, yeah, I check better help. That's not in here over no one. I'm uh, close to I Like always. Sorry, Langston, but Philip is running on a clock. God, it's weird how when it's in the same room, it just is instantaneous. That feels off. But I can't understand it. What the fuck? Hello. <laughs> Caught the wrong thing. Shoot again, dickhead. It's uncomfortable to watch every time. Dude literally starts punching holes in the arena. Like an asshole. Yep. God damn it, stop grabbing the wrong thing. Ow. Damn it, stop grabbing random shit. Ow, oh, I didn't. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna. Yep. This is an annoying fight because you're constantly looking up to aim at the former, but then you just fall through a hole that he's punched in the ground and you forgot about. It's a lot of juggling. And I don't just say that because I'm throwing balls at him. Alright, let's try this again. Hello? Oh, I gotta kill Philip again. Damn, that's that's rough, I'm buddy. Back. I'm coming in. Okay. It's gonna be over quick, Philip. like the board, but I can't understand it. Fuck? Oh my god.
that's the other problem, is half the time they just collide with the other projectiles he shoots out. Like so. Oh, he's moving sides again. Let's grab these while we can. Ow. Oh, and they track? Since when? A lady. But I only need like two more good hits to. Oh, and he's not even firing him. Oh, that's a. You're cheating. Fucker. through a pit and die. There's no black pyramid here. Yup. There's a competitor, if you will. The fridge seems fixed. Did fighting that thing off change something? We only get bits and pieces like through like further dialogue with the board, but my basic understanding is that the former is another astral entity like the board and is even implied he might have once been part of the board uh but having been kicked out or whatever happened to him is now basically trying to start his competitor if you will which begins by trying to create his own objects of power to middling success like with the fridge how'd it go where's philip philip's gone something happened before i could get him out at least that's my interpretation of what we get from Poor them. Poor Philip. He never did like fridge duty. <laughs> that's so evil, fucked. Then who's watching the fridge? The fridge is fine now. I took care of it. You don't just take care of altered items. What did you do? I don't know. I touched it and wound up in the astral plane. This thing was in there. It was huge. Had one big eye. Wasn't friendly. We've been getting reports from the astronauts lately about something fitting that description. The astral plane is usually connected to our world through objects of power, not altered items. If this thing is linking itself to altered items, then it's clearly powerful. This may happen again. Do you think that thing is what got Philip? Must have been. The Panopticon is a dangerous place. The agents all know the risks. But, since you're some sort of altered item whisperer, I've got a list of others for you to corral. All oh, right. The hiss are causing containment breaches left, right, and center. Here, start with these. I'll see if there are any others missing while you're gone. My life just got a whole lot easier. You're supposed to say that shit quietly, Langston. 
I'll see you later, Langston. I'll be here, like always. I'm gonna hop over here since this is the nearest control point. Bad pennies. The rangers use them to activate an old object of power. A jukebox, I assume. Does it have any good songs? Nope. Just the one record. Hey, be careful turning it on, though. When it's playing, you get a free trip to the formation. The formation? That sounds ominous. Why is it, it is. Well, the Bureau had been wondering that for years. I mean, it's just a pile of rocks built by God knows who, but... Well, researchers have confirmed it's in the same threshold as the quarry. Well, no one's ever been able to map a physical route to the formation for maintenance. So it's in the quarry. You just don't know where. Pretty much. We only send in annual expeditions to the formation now. Checkups, Salvador calls them. This year's team went in the day the hiss arrived. Right. I haven't gotten a chance to tell him Salvador's dead. I can go in and take a look. I'd appreciate that. The jukebox is kept just past the security booth over there. Put in the token and enjoy the ride. I have to go. Me too. You're not Only the for me person. to talk to you again, because I need to finish this other quest. I don't think I ever told you this, but I was actually on the path to being a ranger once. Did the whole boot camp thing. Even got rookie status. Anyway, not the point. My old ranger squad was a great bunch. There was six plus me. Remus, Hazard, Cho, Guy, Hepton, Stone, and Thompson. Right, this that quest. Back from an expedition yesterday. You do get a couple, like, good, like, out ex exploration side quests at this point in the game. You get Langston's Runaways, you get this. You see, they prep for the worst, but I think we're already past that. We all wore these pouches around our neck. I really don't want the to get them. Could you find him for me? Uh, the squad would have come back through maintenance, but they probably spread out from there. I'll keep an eye out for that, Marisha. And I won't let them stay his. I All right. Know. Anything else, Arish? No? We good? Wait, actually, do I tell you I found Salvador? Yeah, extra security on your brother. No offense, but that dude is the scariest motherfucker I have ever laid eyes on. None taken, it's true. Like I said, no offense. I have to go. You're not the only one. Yeah, let's get this over with. Talk to Hope. Your Pope. Bleh. The resonance emitted from the HRAs is purely antithetical to every variant of the HIS signal I can arrange. No, it's happening. After all these years, Dylan is here. But am I too late? A little bit. I need to know. He's clearly been affected by the hiss, but it's different than any other manifestation we've recorded. Maybe what makes you so special is genetic. He was a prime candidate. Or maybe it's Polaris protecting him, something else affecting the situation. I need to run tests. He seems more in control, more present. I want to see him. My brother. Or is he? Of course. Marshall set up an HRA warded cage to contain him. It's on the upper floor up the stairs. Okay, I need to go. Jesse, be careful. All right. Wait, hold on. Side quest, side quest. Also, lore notes on the table. Jesse, when you were down in research, did you run into a Dr. Rhea Underhill? Oh, uh, the mole. I didn't. Who is she? She was 
is a colleague of mine, a researcher studying a kind of extra dimensional. Might do some of these off research. off camera. We'll see. Well, I don't like the sound of that. No one does. Look, I haven't heard from Rhea since the Hiss arrived. Would you mind having a look around for her next time you're in research? Of course. Thanks, Jesse. Now, what's on your mind? I should be going. Enjoy your dad. I will. reason to quit uh, put on the wrong there we go where is he again I used to know this it's one of these fucking rooms I think it's on the top floor actually Hey now, I'm right fucking here, I hear you. Also, are you really not gonna let me fly in the central executive room? That's fucking annoying. Ah, this feels like a good direction. Yep, that seems like a sure sign. That's not a encouraging sign. Shit. He's not glowing red if that's something. Can you hear me? Come on, my Dylan. I'm here. I found you. You've always been in there. You want this to be true. Do you know who I am? Oh, you know me. Say it. You are Dylan Faden's sister. He's talking in the third person. Always a good sign. Do you know who you are? Not Dylan. Trench and Darling made sure of that. I'm P6. P6. But I'm better now. The hiss made me better. Oh, that's concerning. You've always been the new you. You want this Can you stop that? Please. <sighs> Not exactly the reunion I'd hoped for. It feels good to say those words. I want to say them. They sound good. They make me feel good. Don't you want to say them too? No. Fuck off, no. You need to help me get this thing out of his head. If he is still in there, if there is anything left, you have to help me. Uh oh, he can see Polaris. You came in through the hole in you. We let you in. You've always been here. The only true a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Stop it. Orange peel. Shit. Orange Shit. peel. He can see you. This is not safe. We found Polaris together with my sister when we were very small, in ordinary, in the desert, through the door opened up by the slide projector. But she didn't help when Trench took me away. She didn't give me any powers. All the powers are my own powers. And <laughs> she didn't help when they locked me up for years. After the song time for a pause, we build you till nothing remains. The air cracks and the truth will march out of you. You are home. That's unsettling. The Bureau brought the slide projector back here with me. And the Bureau did what the Bureau does. They used it. And they found... They opened the door up to the hiss. 
That's the only thing I can thank them for. There. There it is. We stopped the Altered World event in Ordinary when we shut down the slide projector. And now the projector's here. When your worm is a tune, you can't stop humming in a dream. Baby, baby. Dylan listens, the hiss listens to Justin Bieber? Nothing to worry about. <laughs> Funny. I welcome the hiss. I let it in. To get rid of her. The hiss set me free. Polaris is using you. The Bureau is using you. You are a puppet. You can almost hear our words, but you forget. If we shut off the slide projector, maybe, maybe that will stop the hiss. Maybe it's not too late for my brother. You must see the truth for yourself, Jesse. Sister. The horrible truth about the Bureau. The hiss is the better option. Go to the prime candidate program in the containment sector. I have the key card to get you there. Salvador wanted me to have it. Wanted? Bullshit. I saw what the hiss did to Salvador. What it turned him into. Okay, Dylan. I'll go. I want to see the truth for myself. I'll go. But only to look for this light projector. You can help me. We can end this. Oh wait. I don't know what else I'm hoping to find here. Dylan. Can we talk? I'd like to tell you about a dream I had last night. Off to a good start. All right, there's all kinds of fan theories okay. about Dylan's dreams. I'm listening. I was back in ordinary. Before all of this happened. But in the dream, I was alone. It was just me. I was the only child. A girl. My name was Jesse Dylan Faden. But then the Bureau came and caught me, brought me back here, locked me up. Have you ever noticed that our names, Jesse, Dylan, they could be girls' names, boys' names, could be anything. Jesse I'd agree with, but I don't think I've ever met a girl named Dylan, at least not with the first name. I find that weird. Sure. What the hell was that? Is he trying to mess with me? Maybe Dylan's still in there. You're Maybe doing a lot of hoping. I'd like to talk to my brother, please. Dylan? Dylan would like to tell you about a dream he had just now. This again? I was going to be the new director of this place. I helped you get a job here so that we could be together. All right, this becomes You're relevant later. Assistant. You'd make coffee and deliver the mail, and there was always plenty of work to do. And it stayed that way, forever and ever. It was nice. Really nice. Kind of sexist. That's debatable. But here's the strange thing. The dream shifted, and none of it was real anymore. It was a game. We were in a the game, fuck? and it was a fucking boring game. But you couldn't stop playing. And then it shifted again. Is that a meta reference? Or maybe it was another Did they just call this game boring? Or maybe I'm just confusing them. But in this other dream, it was more like a musical. This is an ordinary song about an ordinary girl from an ordinary town. 
It's the ordinary story. She worked an ordinary job in an ordinary office. Oh, he's total Looney Tunes. And that's all I can remember of that dream. Uh huh. That's nice, bud. I don't see that making it to Broadway. Maybe I can learn more about the hiss from him. Can we talk? I just had an interesting dream. Interesting? Oh, shit. <laughs> That's fascinating, but let's talk about the hiss for a change, yeah? This dream was about the hiss. Ugh. That's what I'm gonna get. In my dream, the hiss had broken free of this prison. This house. Uh, the, like I quick flashes you. with the camera work are creepy as shit. The president himself was there to welcome us. He was the first one to take the hiss in. Spread the word. At first, many people thought it was horrifying. That he was horrifying. But also, Many people who heard his words wanted to welcome the hiss in. And slowly, more and more of them came around until the whole world was brought together by the hiss. It was wonderful. Okay, thanks for sharing that. For the record, and there it never goes. happen. Not as long as I'm alive. Oh my god, dude, how many dreams Maybe did I'm you have? To punish myself. I think you are. Any new dreams you'd like to share, Dylan? I'm glad you asked, sister. This dream, like all dreams now, felt very <laughs> real. Like reality. And reality now feels like a dream. Maybe it's all a dream. Maybe it's all real. Dream where my brother endlessly tells me about his dreams. I was in a dark place. And there was a dark man there. His name was Mr. Door. And he told me that there are many worlds. Side by side, on top of each other. Some inside of others. In one world, there was a writer who wrote a story about a cop. Alan Wake. In another world, the cop was real. Dor said he himself was in all of them at the same time, endlessly shifting between them. I wonder if there are references to uh, Mr. Dor and other these worlds. Uh, games by this studio. I wanted to bring the hiss there. But he didn't want to help me. He didn't like the idea. What did he know? I'm not wild about the idea myself. Here we go again. Once more with feeling. Let me guess. You want to tell me about your dream? Yes. Yes. In fact, I'm having a dream right now. What? Oh, that's new. That's very new and very alarming. I'm standing in the corner watching Jesse and Dylan talk about this very dream. This very dream. He said just now. And repeated it again now. I'm standing there and watching and that's all I can do. It's as if I'm trapped there. And that's all I have to say about that dream. Okay, okay, Dylan. That's good. Uh -huh. Is he still in there? I'm is wondering. Games? I don't know. Well, I think we're finally done with Dylan's dream time. We can get him a journal. Let him write it all down, you know? Anyway. Oh wait, right. 
first, uh, let's hop over to research. All right, now I can craft jukebox tokens. No, I don't want to craft the jukebox token. I just... Hello. Hello, I'm Michael Eisner. <laughs> um, so, Jack, what did you think of the latest episode of Invincible? Oh, fuck, every side plot. Every time I thought it was fucking, okay, cool, that's that. <laughs> it just kept fucking going. So, just for, I don't want to go into spoiler territory, but just to say, I think you, I think you know what I'm about to say. Mm-hmm. How could they do that to my boy? It was uncalled for. He, he was my favorite side character in the whole show. How could they do that? <laughs> I know, I know. Mark's best friend didn't get laid. It's a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite part of it all. <laughs> the sock misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't want to, like, to no, again, we're not going to go into spoilers for this, but also watch Invincible season two. It is episode three, and it's already a fucking roller coaster. <laughs> a lot of emotion. Not ready for it. Because like episode two, it's pretty good, pretty standard episode. We got the Lizard League, my favorite group. The Lizard League. Wait, is there? A... No, there's not. It's, it's downstairs. The, the the one spoiler I will say for the new episode. Is like they kept talking about the monarch, and like that's where I'm gonna stop with anything spoilery. Like mm. the monarch, the monarch, and I just kept thinking to myself, like the monarch. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because like, like lizard king or whatever his name is, like or king lizard. That's literally just the monarch, the monarch from fucking <laughs> Venture Bros. I mean, aside but, like, again being a giant and very direct parody of the Serpent Society. Which I love the Serpent Society because it's so dumb. Shit. Um. Did you know the Serpent Society was supposed to be the main bad guys of the third Captain America movie? I think yes. I mean, aren't they still but, like rumored to be appearing into the in the next one? Yeah, they are. Hold on, real quick. Altered item mm, A one six zero, aka the mirror. This proposal is to finally determine the precise nature of the reflected space within the altered item. Is it transplant or er, uh, psychologically generated or rooted within our own dimension? How does the altered item know the space in its vicinity well enough to reflect it? Why does it reflect some materials but not others? Is the space a parallel reality? If so, then we need to consider that while the we possess this physical end of the mirror, someone else owns the other. What purposes might they use it for? Can they walk through to, into our own world? What are their motives? Lastly, to what purpose does the altered item produce the reflections of individuals that enter it? Can these mm -hmm. reflected entities leave the altered item? As with the altered items, as with all altered items, we need to attempt to distinguish if this behavior is redacted. So this um, room is entirely de like dedicated to studying a mirror altered item. And yeah. there's... Sorry, go on. Uh, I was going to say, have you heard the latest theme park news? Depends. Six Flags news. Elaborate further. Uh, so there was news today, and my dad was telling me about this. So Six Flags is building another coaster... Claiming it to be the tallest, fastest roller coaster they're ever going to build. Oh, well, that's pretty standard, especially for regional parks. Uh, here's the bad news, and mostly bad for us. It's only going to be in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, tracks. I'm like, fuck, man. I want that's that, that's... but also I don't really care because I'm not going to ride it ever. <laughs> okay, so that's my left. Only the closest shutter to me is down. I believe it's like 600 feet tall or some shit like that. That's dope or as like, hell. Yeah, it's like it's a, it's a big it's a big one. It's a big one. Now the shutters to its containment cell act as the combination lock to. Oh wait, right. First off, there's this fucking wild little audio recording. Debrief for a mirror excursion seven. Seven. I will talk over it the entire time. Party. party spent approximately three hours in the mirror, the longest time on record. Can you describe your experience inside Agent Hardy? 
He's speaking in reverse. <laughs> Andrew Hardy is physically healthy. All tests have come back clean. Yet the speech issue has persisted for hours. <laughs> Calm down, agent. It could be psychosomatic, but the fact that this only occurred after returning from the mirror makes a paranatural explanation more likely. I recommend a battery of tests and a class orange quarantine. So remember that recording, because it's going to become relevant later. Oh, wait, no, I already... It looks like there's yes. a mirror in there. I already checked that one. And so this one... The furthest two shutters are closed, and the fur closest one is open. Oh my god. What a weird way to lock something up. It looks like the strike might actually go back on. I heard not everyone was happy with the uh, contract, and the vote was kind of iffy. Now, as someone, now, on one hand, fight the good fight. On the other hand, motherfucker, I need to get paid. I get it. I get both sides. God, also, this thing has given me Oculus vibes big time. Oh, the movie? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can never look at uh, someone eating an apple the same way again. <laughs> yeah. Um, Th that scene fucked me up more than anything else in the movie. <sighs> I think. Oh, now Jesse's talking backwards. Man, you know what, Jack? I'm really impatient yeah, for the right. new episode of Invincible. I think I'm, I think just to buy time, I'm gonna watch uh, the boys diabolical. Why would you do that? Because I saw the one clip that Garth Ennis wrote. I'm like, fuck, that actually looks kind of fun. Hold on, real quick. Please note, I don't think Garth Ennis is a good writer. I think he's one of the worst conflict writers of all time. It's the debrief, but now the interviewer's voice is reversed. But, but Hardy's voice is straight ahead. I just got to spit all over my computer screen. Why are you talking like that? What's wrong with you? All of you? There's something in that fucking mirror. All right, so hold on. I forgot I needed to check something. Oh, but I can't do that yet, can I? Right, I'll have to do about, it afterwards. There's something about Jesse's run cycle that's really funny to me. Anyway, time for a surprise boss fight. After a minute, actually. First, we gotta do a uh, dramatic build up. Yeah, no. Yeah, but, like, do you see what I mean? Like, she has kind of like a floaty animation to her as she runs. Does you say floaty? I, I God damn it. I mean, that's not what I meant, but thank you. What the fuck? Uh, hello? Hmm, mannequins. That's horror 101 right there. And a different Jesse. We need the cook. You can probably tell I'm still very congested. I'm not at my best this time of year. There, fake Jesse. She's back again. And she's got drip. Why can't this Jesse have drip, Jack? She can if I kill this other Jesse. Wait, do you get a suit if you kill her? Yeah, I get the outfit she's wearing if I kill her. Cool. Maybe you can replace the fucking mustard suit you gave her. Hey, this is gold. Thank you. I had to do the whole weird thing in the luck and probability d department. Oh, of course. <laughs> No, you basically, like, it's a puzzle where you have to set off a bunch of lucky charms in exactly the right way in order to get a roulette wheel to spin perfect. Were they magically delicious? Very. <laughs> the giant golden koi fish, especially. Ooh, I do love koi fish. No, it was a statue. No, I know. Uh-oh. 
He's Did loose. You ever, do you ever see koi ponds and you're like, I just want to hang out? Oh, of course. Oh, nope. Nothing okay. sets off the vibe perfectly than a koi pond. I have to fight another Jesse. Um, I got weirdly nostalgic today for Steamrolled, one of the Game Drum stuff shows. Yeah, I remember Steamrolled. And I watched my uh, one of my favorite episodes of Steamrolled, <laughs> um, Sonic Dreams Collection. Ah, oh, the best. Just tricking the poor bastard into thinking this is a real thing. The the second best episode of Steamrolled ever is the second episode of the show. Or it might have been the third, I can't remember. Um, yeah, Counter Strike Global Offense, or whatever the fuck GO stands for. No, yeah, it's uh, uh, Global Offensive. That was correct. Is it? Ah, shit. For, for those of you who uh, aren't as familiar with Game Grumps leading into this moment, or at the very least weren't around during this era of Grumps, um, up until that episode, Barry Kramer has never spoken on recording. Re really, the CSGO episode was the first time Barry spoke. At the very least, on Grumps, yeah. You can, like, you can, like Google any other video up until that oh, point. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. But, like, yeah, Barry has been the silent editor, and even uh, in the first Barry. episode or two. <laughs> Barry. But even in the first episode of um, Steamroll, when they were playing Quake, like Quake Tournament or whatever, um, Barry didn't speak. He just typed into the text, uh, the, the text chat in the corner, just to keep the bit going. And then at the end of CS:GO, Dan just goes, "Oh wow, yeah, great, Barry. What do you, what do you fucking guys say for yourself?" And Barry just goes, "Thanks for watching." And then everyone loses their shit. No one thought Barry would ever speak on the show, and it was a great moment. Oh, I just got something weird. What the fuck was that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh no, it's a Threshold Kids episode. Let's join the Threshold Kids! I don't want to say something about Invincible Since right now. Since oh, a trip with his father into the world outside our wonderful bureau, I think <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. <clears throat> so, it's Mr. Bones! Oh, I don't like that. Mr. Bones is here to tell us about secrets. Excuse me. <clears throat> a secret is something you don't tell anyone outside the bureau, because people outside the bureau aren't ready for the truth of reality. Very good. When you tell someone a secret, you're hurting their brains very badly. Now. Let's review what exactly is or isn't a secret. First, we have a rainbow. Secret or not secret? Not secret. Correct. And the true version of rainbows? Yo, what the fuck? <coughs> the true version of rainbows? Cats? Okay. Why is this getting so warped? You mean Bigfoot? Did, wait, did he call it a Chimera? He called it the Alpine Chimera. That doesn't even make any fucking sense. Aren't Chimeras like multiple animals at once? Fusions of multiple animals. Yeah, that's not, that doesn't fit Bigfoot. Uh, what happened to Meg? I'm not allowed 
to go outside anymore. Oh. <clears throat> Correct. Um. That was that unsettling. Happens. Anyway. <laughs> That's the fun part of this playthrough. It will watch like the most horrifying thing you've ever seen. So anyways. Either, yeah, either Kevin and I will come in like, hey, let me tell you about this fart I had earlier. Um, those are just, have you seen the movie After Hours, directed by Scorsese? Uh, I know of it. Haven't actually sat down and watched it. There's a shot where it's supposed to look like the main characters running down multiple blocks in New York. But they couldn't actually use a dolly track for the shot, so they just had the main character run around in circles and they just follow them. <laughs> I th okay, I think I'm actually... Unless I'm misremembering, I might just actually just be supposed to leave. You like, probably go, should. Go back to the mirror and go out the other end. Oh, uh, did you hear what uh, so Tim Allen said? He pitched an idea for what Toy Story 5 should be about. Hey, what if we just didn't make that? That's an idea. Right. That, hey, that's a start. Let's not do this, because no, we didn't ask for the last movie, and we sure as shit didn't ask for this one. <clears throat> but he thinks Toy Story 5 should be about Andy trying to get the toys back. What the f- is that real? Is that true? That's a real, like, article well, that I've been seeing. I have seen it, like, go around a bit, yeah. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Like, Tim, unless you have a hook here, that's a terrible idea for a sequel. <clears throat> that being said, I will pitch my idea for Toy Story 17. <laughs> Sorry. In a world. <laughs> no, so when I was in middle school, I guess because like by the time Toy Story 3 came out, a lot of my friends in middle school were like, man, how many fucking Toy yeah, Story okay, there it is. How many Toy Story sequels are we going to fucking get? And my friend, uh, my one friend wrote a pitch for Toy Story 17 where it's like, we're not even gonna like consider all the other movies beforehand. We're just gonna like make up like a story to go for it. So it's like, it's the future. All the toys from Andy's toy room have now been turned into actual people. Uh, Buzz, Buzz is dead, and Woody's like an alcoholic now. <laughs> so just like absolute cruelty towards the toys then. <laughs> um. <laughs> Woody and Andy hate each other, and they don't want to talk to each other anymore. And Sid's the president. <laughs> and Sid's <sighs> like, you two, you two need to, <laughs> you two need to work together to do this one mission for me, and then all your debts are cleared, or some shit like that. <laughs> Came a long way from a garbage man. <laughs> Proud of him. <laughs> Just like. I remember when they when they like when I read the pitch for this it was like this is such a dumb bit and I and I adore it. Alright, fully filled in like, on the well, bottom and right, one line on the top and the bar has to be in the bottom left. Yes. Oh but it's probably mirrored so it's bottom and left. Yeah. Um so, also, I just love the fact that, like, fucking 12-year-olds came up with that pitch. Look at that. Hell yeah. I, did it. I like that as a puzzle for the mirror dimension. You have to see... The already open chest is out in the real world, so you have to read the combination that was used to open it in the real world and take it into the mirror dimension. Mm hmm Did you watch today's episode of Dead Meat? I have not yet. I assume it is very busy. Uh, yeah. Look. Oh, wait, shit. I was going to go back to Central Executive and put on the new outfit. Uh, for those of you who would like to know what which episode of Dead Meat came out today, it was the Terrifier 2 episode. Yeah, 
It was Terrifier 2. Uh, and uh, if you are squeamish, and I'm not saying, like, oh, you don't like horror movies. I'm saying if you like horror movies and you're, like, not comfortable with really excessive gore, don't watch Terrifier. I'm, I'm not saying this to, like, gatekeep or shit like that. I'm saying because it makes me uncomfortable. The first movie is definitely worse, I feel, in terms of, like, oh, wow, this is rough. The second movie, it's, like, it's too goofy to really take it seriously like that. Like, you know, wrong. it's a lot of gore, and if that's not really your thing, totally get it. it it's a lot. I mean, again, it's literally a movie about a clown violently murdering people. And, like, it's not even just like he's murder Like, he's mutilating them as they're still alive. But, like, like... The first movie is definitely, like, okay, this is just, like, very guttural, and, like, this is just a lot. The second movie, it's like, okay, it's a lot, but, like, this is just fucking dumb. Like, what the fuck am I even looking at anymore? Like, you had me in the first half, but then you lost me. Also, Chris Jericho's in that movie, which makes me a little happy. Gotta get up <clears throat> there. Is there a staircase? Not through medical, I don't think, but let's we'll just go through. Oh, okay, yeah, in the right place, clearly. <laughs> Oh, uh, Scott Pilgrim came out today too. Wow, good for him. Uh, awkward for his. <laughs> awkward for his. Are they married? I can't remember. <laughs> shut, shut the fuck up. Look, if, you really if he set up the pins like that, I'm gonna knock him down. I've seen you bowl. Just kidding, no, I haven't. I have tried to get us to go bowling. I know. Actually, you're trying to get us to go mini golfing. No, Ke well, yes, but that was originally Kevin's idea. I just yeah. provided an excuse to do so. I, I'm, I'm gonna be frank with you. I'm terrible at bowling. It's not even just like, oh, I don't know what to do. It's like it physically hurts me to do. Do you granny roll them? No, I don't do that because I don't believe in that. It's just like it, it fucks with my. Ri it's, it's against my, my religion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't believe in that. No, it's, it hurts my wrist, and it's just like, I don't know. Definitely not for me. I like hanging out at bowling alleys, because it's like, okay, I can vibe here. It's a vi it's a chill vibe, and there's greasy food always available. Exactly, and I can maybe get beer, depending. Uh, Jim Gaffigan once put it best. Who, uh, I, I love whoever came up with bowling. It's such a lazy man's sport. There's a hand dryer as part of the equipment. Yeah. Um, like, are you getting sweaty hands rolling this bowl down a lane? Ball down a lane. Here, here's a hand dryer. And I have absolutely that hand dryer a few times. Yeah, yeah you want to keep your grip. I'm, I'm. But like again, it's one of the only. You know what I laughed about recently? You ever been to a Top Golf? Yeah, I love it. They're basically just bowling alleys for golf. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. No, I'm not denying that. I think it's great. <laughs> we, um, Chase, Jake, and I went to Top Golf a little while ago, and I think I told the story on stream before. I felt so bad. So first, first and foremost, Jake. So yeah, for the for viewers who aren't familiar, Chase, and, well, you know Chase probably, but. Jake is another friend of ours who is part of Screw It Brew It most productive. I was gonna say if you see him on if you watch Screw It Brew It, you'll have seen Jake. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Jake Redacted. Yeah, yeah. So Jake is like a really good golfer. Like he can hit the like he can hit the ball like it's no one's business. Uh, and then there's me who used to golf, but like hasn't in a stuff. while. Yeah, like I've, I've lost my touch, and it took me a minute to really get my groove back. I have no chase. And I feel so bad laughing right now. There was a moment where, um... Have you been golfing before at all? Yeah. So you know like when you go golfing, you tend to have like practice swings before you actually go to hit the ball? Yeah, of course. Oh no, so I think I see where this is going. 
the chase one up. It was, it was like one of like our last rounds at top top wall. And the chase goes to swing. And he missed. And I'm like, alright, he's going for like a practice swing. And he goes again. Oh go, no. Right. He's trying to like get his, he's trying to get like, get like a feel for it. I understand. I've been there a few times. He was not. Then he, then he went for the third swing. And then I went, oh no. Oh no, this isn't practicing. Then he went for the fourth swing. Oh, hey. And I'm like, so I'm like, oh Jesus Christ. He's going to kill us swing. if he finds out you pulled this on stream. <laughs> By the fifth swing, I had to like look away because I was very visibly laughing. Protect his shame. And I was like, I can't, I can't have him see me laughing. Just another I day at so, the office. I really felt so bad for him because I was like, this is not the best spot to be in right now. God, I hope he never sees this episode. He's gonna get our. He's gonna come after us. <laughs> <laughs> um, Evan's gonna fucking put this clip on TikTok. Oh no! <laughs> please, please don't ask how many swings he took. Kevin, was, you're definitely watching this as, to edit. Please, no. Have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're terrible. Let's see anything interesting. Um. Hmm. I watched. Uh, have you seen the movie Three Ten to Yuma? Again, another one I know of. Haven't seen it yet. You know nothing about it. I get the gist. Just watch it, because I, I did have it spoiled for me when I was younger, so I oh knew how it boy, ended. Oh boy, it's another Threshold Kids. <sighs> Again, they made these to show to a little Dylan as like educational programming. They showed this. They made an actual child watch this, and we wonder why he turned out fucked up. I can see you're upset, man. Oh, Mr. Bones is back. Why don't you tell Uncle Mr. Bones <coughs> what's wrong? I did better <coughs> than my science test. You can't ace every test, Meg. You see, everyone has different brains. Some brains can talk to each other. We call this ESP. ESP? Jesus. Some brains can lift objects, like a baseball. Talk about a fly ball, eh, Meg? <laughs> no interruptions! So who cares if you fail your clairvoyance test? Maybe your brain can throw baseballs, or talk to dead people, or make friends blind. Once we know what your brains can do, we'll know what job to give you. And if your brains are just right, you'll get to sit in the big chair. <laughs> the big chair. It's just an <laughs> actual office chair that they walked the puppets up to. What if I don't awesome. want the big chair? Oh no, Meg. What if I don't, don't want, want a big chair? I do. I'll fucking take it. Everyone wants the big chair, Meg. Shut up, Meg. What the fuck? Again, they showed this to a child. It's <clears throat> pretty rough, bud. 
somewhere in oh. Bright Falls. But isn't Bright Falls? Yeah, Bright Falls is Alan Wake. An unconfirmed threshold manifestation at Cauldron Lake, Washington, resulted in a fictional story written by author Alan Wake creating an AWE in which reality was altered to match that of the story, though only locally and for a limited time. Event response. Mr. Kirkland, head of investigations, was alerted September 13, 2010, by ex-Bureau agent Frank Breaker. Isn't that a character in the game? So he's an ex-Bureau agent. Interesting. Uh, that an AWE event was taking place in Bright Falls, Washington. Refer to event investigated in 1970, 1976, and 1978. Breaker had received a call from Barry Wheeler, Alan Wake's literary agent, on behalf of Breaker's daughter, Sarah, who is the current sheriff of Bright Falls. That's right. A Bureau field team arrived in the site two days later, only to confirm that the event was over. Interviews were, interviews were conducted, referred to U. Anderson, or no, sorry, refer to the 1970 redacted Thomas Zane. 1976, 1978, Odin Anderson, to, uh, slash Tor Anderson, the uh, Anderson brothers, old gods of Asgard, rock on. Uh, Alan Wake was believed to redacted inve- instigator. Eyewitness reports highlight an old light switch, possible object of power that redacted, missing. Wake was not found at the scene. Reports claim he dived into the lake, but no body was recovered in the search. Interesting. Again, I love that this canonizes that Alan Wake happened in, in like, the same universe as Control, which makes... <clears throat> oh, I mean, obviously, that's more canonized by the fact that there's an entire fucking DLC to this game, but you know what I mean. So we may have a Doctor Doom casting. A what? Oh, Doctor Doom. Hit me. Yeah. Mads Mickelson. Fuck, wait, no, we don't. What the fuck am I saying out Yeah, loud? Mads Mickelson was the Doctor uh, Strange like villain in the first movie. Okay, so reportedly, uh, the studio has met with Mads about this, though. I mean, I could I think... see it if they don't show him before he puts the mask on. Also, like, before uh, he becomes scarred. Also, y'all know, like... Doctor Doom is a Romani man. Let's not have like a white boy play him. different circumstances here. Hold on. There was an incident. Yes. Yeah, he's Danish. I was trying to remember where he was from. Not real. I mean, also, Doom is from a fictional country of Latveria, but I get what you're saying. Hi, Kevin. Kevin's here. Yes. Yeah. You get your pizza? Yeah. What kind of pizza? A garlic one. Who? Garlic on there. That's as much spice as he can handle. He's exceptional and under a lot of stress. Funny. They sucked. <laughs> what happened, Kevin? Uh, you know. Uh, we, I told my coworker, hey, he'll be fine. You don't have to work today. Oh, hold on. Let me quiet myself. Sorry. Yeah, I do need to work today. I need them today. <laughs> yeah. I Kevin, you should never say that at work. It was be, two days ago, nice. and it was very slow. And then all of them decided they wanted smoothies before they left. So that's interesting. Uh, it seems like there was an incident when Dylan was younger that where he accidentally killed a researcher. And that's why he started like getting put under security so much. <clears throat> yeah. P6 victim autopsy. Agent killed during redacted involving redacted. Codename P6. So that second redacted is probably Dylan Faden, but still. Uh, autopsy findings. Blunt force injuries to the head and neck, extensive trauma of the abdominal region, lacerations and confusions on the upper and lower torso, fracture of the spinal cord between the L1 and L2 vertebrae, avulsion fracture on the third through tenth ribs, left and right, blunt force injuries of the extremities, abrasions, lacerations, and contusions of the extremities, dislocation of left and right elbow, dislocation of left and right knee. After examination, it was determined that the cause of death was internal bleeding that occur- 
heard when the redacted was contorted through his redacted. Fun times. Great times. Dylan Faden transcript. When the cow was contorted through his butt. I don't know. Mad libs, but you just fill in redacted data. Note, subject was alone during this outburst. You again! I thought I told me... Okay, so he's yelling at Polaris. Told you to leave me alone. Why are you showing no. me th this? I can't do anything. Can't you see where I am? Why don't you help me get the fuck out of here? You always show me things I can't do anything about. Stop showing me her. I don't care anymore, and I don't care about you. You both left me here to rot. Fuck off, you bitch. I will dig my own brain out my own brains if it means getting rid of you. I don't want you here. Get the fucking message. Subject repeated the phrase fuck off numerous times before being sedated. So, Jack is busy. But Kevin, do you have Google Drive available at the moment? Why? So I sent... I sent a link to both of you. Uh, we have the earliest footage for the film that we I shot over the summer. Ooh. Um, running late. Um... So, Kevin, if you wouldn't mind, just go into Google Drive real quick. Is this I don't trust this. You act like think... I'm sending you porn. You find that projector. No, I feel like Are I'm going to be rickrolled. <laughs> just, Kevin, I don't have time to send you a rickroll through Google Drive. Oh, yeah, so the Bureau was, like, following and spying on Jesse. Uh, keeping her as a backup as candidate P7 to Dylan's P6. Motherfucker, did you name this episode History Lesson? Yeah, because we were talking to Dylan in his little cell and listening to all his weird dreams. Yeah. But what about her story, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that was fucking good. Yeah, I mean, this is about Jesse, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That was great. Oh my god. Oh yeah, no, again, yeah. really quickly, just check Google Drive. Check I did, I just didn't turn on the audio for it, because we're There's on... no audio. There's no audio for it. Yep. That's the place to start what did you think? Yeah. It's nice. Just zoom in. Pretty cool, right? Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Well, it, I mean, it is stop motion. Yeah. We literally... Almost died. Who, us or Jesse? No, I was looking at the video. She almost died. Yeah, no, she almost. Well, originally in the script, she was supposed to get hit by a car, like almost well, get hit by a car, and I that, was like, that, that seemed a little too dark. <laughs> well, like, well, no, she wasn't supposed to get hit by a car. She was supposed to almost get hit by a car. I'm like, we have no foreseeable way of actually filming this. I mean, yeah. No, it's yeah. Not like sometimes that. you gotta change it just because it's more realistic to film. We, we just changed it to she trips a little bit and catches herself and then readjusts. His, readjusts. Jesus Christ. Um, so it wasn't like that one drama where like the girl's like, fuck you, I'm so done with you, and then immediately get hit by a bus because I guess they wrote her character off the show. Oh, that's from, um, are you thinking The Final Destination? No, but I know exactly what you're talking about, Tim. Whoa, whoa, then what's Kevin talking about? I don't know. I think it's a TV show. It might be Final Destination. I don't watch those movies. Oh, you can fly. Who puts a bomb in an elevator? Tim, what the fuck? What? I heard that. <laughs> God damn it. It came over the mic. candidates. Experiments. <laughs> oh, I didn't finish about fishing about today. Me and my coworker both were mentally insane for like a full hour. <laughs> Oh, uh, the the joys of food service. Yep. I don't remember what he did, but I remember I called him after called him like my friend's name, even though he's not. Uh, even though he's white and skinny. <laughs> like I don't even know why at the time I called him like. <laughs> so I have a friend who's like from India, and he. India. For some weird reason, I decided to call him my friend from India's name instead of his actual name, and I'm like, this is really off. Really? Wait, someone's not right here. Like, oh man. I think I'm getting people mixed up. And then all the so orders started blending together. 
I had to convince. He was telling me about how like there was this like movie recasting of Harry Potter and how Will Smith could have was like Hagrid in like one of these like repostings and it was like oh man it'd be so funny if Hagrid just burst into a rap and he's like Will Smith's not a rapper so I had to explain that Will Smith was a rapper before he was an actor he did <laughs> clean he rap because he didn't want to make his mama cry yeah he didn't swear in his raps because of that yeah yeah started there and um, he did, I, I a did tell him about get jiggy with it and he thought I was fucking with me and then I told Siri and he thought Siri was in on it <laughs> oh wait, wait you bribed Siri guys, guys we may we may or may not have more Jada secrets about Will oh god she has just decided she's gonna air every bit of dirty laundry now huh nah I'm just kidding it's not from Jada it's from his assistant still God damn, uh, we're just gonna air every bit of that family's dirty laundry. He apparently has secret sexual relation with a man. I forget who oh, it is. Oh, I heard. This sounds like some tabloid shit. And apparently Will is the bottom and has a very small penis. Which, that, we, I know. Again, are we that. sure Jada didn't pay for this story to be go around? <laughs> like, also, I'm not saying take sides, but also, like, she is very clearly trying to, like, Take him down a peg. Yeah. I mean, it's like also, if I caught you guys... It's like if I caught you guys saying I have a small penis on the stream, and then I just exclusively made all of your dialogue that one thing. Also, don't do that for me. <laughs> um, but also, like, first of all, first and foremost, we know for a fact Will Smith does not have a small penis. They had to tape it down for iRobot. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. That's fucking funny. Like, we know he doesn't have a small dick. You can say he's bad in bed. That's fine. Like, what am I going to do about that information? Again, okay. I feel like with the shit of, like, Jada dropping the bombshell, like, while he's clearly trying to maintain the facade of a good marriage, that they've been, like, separated for fuck knows how long, uh, people are jumping on the uh, paparazzi train to try to find juicy gossip. Like, just leave the man alone. Like, what the fuck has he actually done to you? He is celebrity. Also, he must suffer. Well, he's also in Scientology. Again. Oh, uh, also that. No, I'm not even saying, like, you have to, like, side with Will Smith. I just think it's pretty interesting that it's, like, it's coming out the way it is. Yeah, like, it's almost exclusively been a Jada thing. So now, like, all of a sudden, been, was it his or her assistant? I think it was his assistant. Still, the fact that, like, one of their assistants is suddenly coming out with this, like, super crazy, like, story that makes him look really bad in the relationship, when people are very much, I feel like, at least from what I've seen, not siding with her. And, like, is she just jealous because her only legacy is the hippo from Madagascar? Damn, okay, you're just gonna throw her under the bus like that. I am. Because what else has Jada done in her life? Fox to Tupac? Again, I'm not saying, like, I'm going to side with or hate on either, but I can't help but feel there's a very specific thing going on in this dynamic. Well, I didn't expect it to go down this route. <laughs> I, I, I would have I made a really cruel joke towards Jada, but then I realized that's kind of fucked up. I'm not going to go down that road. Because then Wolf's just going to appear in my room and then slap me if I do it. <laughs> does does it involve the uh, film G.I. Jane? It involves being bald. <laughs> I can never have Will Smith be a guest star on this show. Not that we'd no. ever get him. I was going to say, damn, what a loss. I mean, I would have... Look, no offense, I would love to hang out with Will Smith. I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying, like, yeah, we were really... Oh, no. Oh no, these fuckers. Oh, I hate these you guys. Know, we, we can never... I mean, I don't know, YouTube, I mean, he's a pretty big YouTuber, apparently. He did that one rewind, right? I mean, that's that's cool. the, the, the fucking like, hiss warp. Yep. Where, like, Will Smith Hagrid goes up to Dragon and he's like, Ah, that's hot. That was my other... That's joke. hot. <laughs> ah, that's hot. That's rewind time. <laughs> when Harry and Hermione have to go back in time, it's rewind time. <laughs> Hagrid's there too, all of a sudden. It's like, 
Packard, what are you doing here? Uh, rewind time. <laughs> like, so dumb. Dumbledore appears like we paid Will Smith just to be in more of these scenes. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> like, oh. Who the fuck is Will Smith, Dumbledore? And then Dumbledore disappears. <laughs> Question. Is there any... What's the magic? Oh, shit. Yeah, that actually worked. Is there I was spell? gambling on that. <laughs> is That's cool as shit. Was there a spell or a potion in Harry Potter that makes you turn into an animal? That's the metamorphosis potion, well, no, isn't no, it? No, 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 no. What? Uh, there, you can. I don't know if it was a spell or just something you are. You can be an animagus, like uh, Sirius Black Will, was. I want Will Smith to turn into a fish. Stop. No. Stop. Stop. I know where you're going with this. Uh 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 uh. uh every little thing. Gonna be all right. We will not revert to Shark Tale. We are better than this. I mean, on the bright hold on, side, hold on. If... Now, hear me out. Hear me out. Martin Scorsese's character. Oh, you mean Sykes the Pufferfish? The, best the only in the animation acting role Martin Scorsese has ever done. Sykes from fucking Shark Tale. He's got kids. Uh, actually. To even further that, uh, if either of them tried to turn into a fish, they would just die of asphyxiation. So we wouldn't have to deal with any Shark Tale references. God, you ever seen that, like... I only found out about it when clips of it started circulating on TikTok. There's this fucking kids movie. I don't even know if it's from America. I doubt it. Oh! Uh, uh, where uh, these kids get... Yeah, help, I'm a fish. Can a fish breathe under water? Or can a human breathe under water? I hate that clip because it's so fucked. Because the death is just so fucking silent and realistic. I'm like, oh. He died. Anyway. <laughs> this is just like, I wanted to talk about my insanity at work today, and now I'm just like... Is everybody okay? <laughs> Tim, Tim literally had talked about this phenomenon on this show. One of us will be talking about some, like, serious story or trying to follow the plot of the game, and then the other two will talk about our farts or something. <laughs> Alright. Like, I'll be like, man. Like, we'll, like we'll, we'll have an episode reading, like, Blood Meridian, and it's like... It'll be like a really fucked up chapter in that book, and then all of a sudden it's like, let me tell you about the pile of dookie I just dropped in the toilet. Where do you see this show going that you see us talking about Blood Meridian? I'll do it right now. I don't know the reference. Uh, it's a book. Up, it's a book about really fucked up shit that happened in the Old West. I play video games for a living. You think I know? I know how to read. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You own glasses. You wear They're glasses, you decoration. fucking nerd. <laughs> you read. Hey, all Scott here. Oh, I heard he just came out. <laughs> no, that's Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> Actually, is that out, the new Scott Pilgrim thing out yet? Yeah, it should be, right? Oh. Came out today. Oh, shit. Yeah, I watched a little bit of it, and it's cute. I like it. Um, also, jokes jokes on you, Tim. I like RPGs. Fuck you. Damn, Kevin's got me there, Jack. I'll be right back. Let's see. What do we got here? Oh, no. I'm a box. Help. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to go through all the... Your works. I'm not going to go through all the notes just because it would take fucking forever. So, my general... Oh, right. Real quick. America Overnight, a, uh, which I think does appear in Alan Wake, is basically revealed as a bureau psyop to disseminate uh, false leads uh, amongst actual like anomalous in like intel that makes it out to the public. So, like... If someone finds out Bigfoot's real, they're gonna like talk it up until no one believes Bigfoot's real. Oh yeah. No, not ordinary. Ordinary. What is gonna happen? I know my coworker messed up something at work. 
that like made us take crazy that made us feel like we were taking crazy pills. I just can't remember what the hell it was. The only example is how I just went completely crazy pills today, and just like that's that's when I learned Fortnite news about like all the skins and stuff too, where I was like. Why? It's a gun game. Why are you banning gun costumes? It makes no sense. We don't want to promote gun violence. You literally use guns in your well, game. <laughs> uh, the only thing I'll say with the Fortnite thing is I doubt that they were the ones who decided those guidelines. That's probably something being imposed on them. From like, from like Ubisoft or not Ubisoft? What's the maybe it's Epic? Fortnite? Maybe it's someone else. I don't know. Like some sixty-year-old, who knows? Someone's just like out of touch and just like, all right, cool. You know what this game is, right? So confusing, man. And also, Venom is too violent, but Michael Myers, okay. <laughs> Wait, the Venom skin got c censored? Apparently, Venom's being I guess you didn't read the article. Apparently, Venom gets censored, even though it's that was one of the points. It's just like also. Like, the, the, the person who writes the article breaks down at one point. He's just like, also, here's where I'm confused. So the Venom skin is banned, but Michael Myers' Omni-Man is okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Venom it's Venom is too scary and violent. <laughs> he got teeth. And if you have the Tom Hardy version, he has toes for some reason. We know why. Yeah, so he can have his only fan feet picks. I don't understand what you mean. Exactly, okay. Kevin. You got my drift. It's why, it's why I'll never be bare feet in any of my YouTube videos, just in case I need a backup plan. <laughs> Gotta keep them one. Horrible idea. Oh man, I'm so glad that like I keep the camera above the waist so nobody gets to see my feet that are always covered in socks. Oh look, a tiny hey, little house. Dog picks can go for money too. Hey Jack, you see that red house on the bottom left? Uh huh. You should blue that house. Give him like a blue little window and maybe a blue Corvette. And I blew blue it him. up. I'm blue, da -ba -dee -da -ba -da. I feel like that was probably counterintuitive because that was probably a model of Jesse's childhood home. That's you know, how I thought that once. Up that's how out. I thought once uh, Dylan left so many years ago. But no, basically, uh, because I'm not going to go through all the lore notes, and this is a good good a time as any to explore it. The ordinary AWE that like started all this off and got J Dylan kidnapped by the bureau was when Jesse, Dylan, and some of their friends were digging through the dump in their town and found a slide projector. It had a single set of slides with it. And they realized that if they put any of these slides in the projector and turned it on, the image in the slide would serve as a gateway to another dimension, each slide leading to a different one. And this was all well and good, until things from those other dimensions started coming in, all the adults in town disappeared, and their local bullies got turned into fucking, like, monsters serving this other monster. I see, so it's Children of the Corn, got it. In one of those slides, uh, they found a desert with five pillars sticking out of the ground they called the hand because they look like fingers. Uh, and in that, they found Polaris, the like energy like thing that like helps Jesse throughout the game. Fuck you, that joke was funny. <laughs> I was in the middle of my, my lecture, please. Uh, anyway, Polaris helped them close the uh, portals, turn off the slide projector, and send all the creatures that had come through back where they came from. Now it seems that the Bureau, with the slide projector, uh, had been fucking around in the same desert where they found Polaris, and that the hiss was also there, and that it oh, came I through. I, I saw the, oh. the, the, the picture, Jim said. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What picture did I start with yet? Oh, I don't know. The bad no A1. Oh, yeah. The flying's nice. Dude, I love it. It's what, it's what, it's what made me buy the game. Why? Why? Yeah, I'll do it. That sounds fun. You can really be Troy from High School Musical. 
Um, is that where they keep it? I want to talk about bits for like co-op mode that I pitched to you guys, but I'm like, I just want to like save that shit like the show. Yeah. If I ever get to make the fucking show. That is a question for the longest time I've been pondering if I ever want to go back to gaming, because I actually got my first noise complaint recently. Um, has nothing to do with yeah. the show, it's because I decided to do, to finally clean my dishes after I got home from work. What the fuck so, did you do? Uh, apparently, I was trying to put my sheet pan into the drying rack, but it wouldn't fit. So I had to fiddle around with it so that it fit in a drying manner. And that caused a lot of metal clanging. <laughs> so I rightfully got a noise complaint for it, because my sink is next to my neighbor's room. That's still dumb. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's fine. I'm just glad Low Night Gaming's okay, man. I would be so distraught if Low Night Gaming was banned. Oh, wow, they literally picked up the entire dump from her hometown and brought it here. How the... Oh, yeah. What if we took cause... the dump and moved it somewhere else? Like, so... Did they build around the dump? Or did they just literally bring it here? No, they literally brought it here. This is, like, ordinary is on the other side of the country. So, Kevin won't get this joke, because, yeah, he won't get this joke. But yeah. My friends are trying to I, call me on stream, and I'm ignoring them, because I'm afraid, because I know they're drunk. <laughs> they <laughs> want to go to IHOP. I'm not saying that. We don't have an IHOP. We only Sorry, have Denny's. Sorry, Denny's. Denny's, yes. In, I'll, I'll only go to Denny's. What? Can we go to Denny's? They can keep their penis-shaped logo. I don't care. <laughs> So, Jack, how did you feel? So, for context to those, before I get into anything, so, if you haven't seen my pilot for the show I want to make co-op mode, go do that. Um, do it. But there's a character in the show named Doran, who's like this great grand wizard character, whatever, who cares? He's dead. Um, I pitched to Jack earlier as a joke. I was like, you know, if I ever pitch the show, that works. I need to recast the character, which I might have to do. It uh, happens between pilots and real things. Just look at Has Been yeah. Hotel. I mean, shit. Look at that show. Uh, but I said, has like he knows we should play Doran. Zorin. Zorin Gavoy. Hey, Zorin has a very accomplished career outside of Dead Meat. Let's clarify that. Uh, he's with Five Second Thumbs, right? Uh, yes. I've never actually watched their stuff. Aside from, like, a few videos here and there, but, like, I'm not super... F like, okay, do Pro Party Massacre 3, yeah, but, like, come on. Oh, hold on. I think this is an important video. Your mom's an important... All right. So, you got the tension. <laughs> I'm setting up a new department. Fuck Dimensional up. research in the research sector, huh? Transferring the slide projector there... That's where my focus will be now. The ordinary site remains as is. We'll be back to... I don't know when. So something scared Dr. Darling. So much so that he set up an entire sector or, uh, to the slide projector. Dimensional research. That's where we go next. Ugh. Oh, that's... is that Dylan? Yeah, that's Dylan. He looks Dylan. like he's causing the he, noise. He, he looks like a serial killer is what he looks like. I think he's causing the noise. That's my prediction. The Finnish Tango! No, he... Nobody's uh, ever survived. He didn't <laughs> cause the hiss, though he is, like, a major host for it. Okay. Ooh. Also, we're just gonna ignore my Finnish Tango. <laughs> I didn't see the context of the joke, so I didn't really get it. Oh, look in the upper left-hand corner. Oh, the finished. Oh, the finished tango. <laughs> we, get, get we're gonna need some this. help for, uh, from Ati. Yes. Ati, how do we do the finished tango? <laughs> oh, fucking no! You in need the three sauna. lemon squares and some nice shoes. <laughs>
Uh, do you ever think about bringing in yes, that like, yeah. one bit sim that we came up with when you were playing that like uh, Call of Duty game? What bit? Uh, never blind a raging dragon. I can't remember the context of that. Oh, I have it written down in like a note in like a sketchbook, but I don't actually have any context for it yet. I have a feeling. Never blind a raging dragon. That's a great line. Yep. Like that to, to the haters. <laughs> Tell my haters. They all my haters, uh, later skater. <laughs> and then I'll just like slide off the screen with a skateboard. <laughs> Look, like Dr. Robotnik dying in Sonic 2. Later hater! Also, that man died on the toilet. How do you feel about that? What? There's just an officer dead in the bathroom. It's right in the toilet. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, sorry, you said that after I mentioned Dr. Robotnik, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, you know, the one where Dr. Robotnik doesn't realize he has a stomach ulcer and does I kill. Sorry, I, I have my... I have so many visited. So, my house has been loud, and I have to check in on people. I'm sorry, I just hear metal crashing. It's, it's alright. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? You know exactly what did, did you catch what I was trying to say there? No, I did not. You were whispering cool, it too let's softly. Move on. Let's move on from that bit. Alright, it's fine. I'll just have to go through it and everything. <laughs> Kevin's gonna hear that later. He goes, God fucking damn it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> so, fellers. Um. Oh. Oh, I didn't explain what happened. The other thing that happened at work. So after. So next week I have two days and then it's Thanksgiving break, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The following week I'm supposed to have three days of cleaning and then I'm just done for like an entire month. So that's more streaming content, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The college has decided, no, F that, we're going to do construction during that week, so you can't be in the building. So I'm going to be assigned to random tests at some point during the week, and I'm like, okay, I'll just take that day off. We don't know which day it is, we don't know what days they're doing the construction and how it affects our schedule, so I literally went to the calendar, which I already crossed off the two days for it, and I just put a bunch of question marks. <laughs> so... So, Ati's janitor card is here playing his music, and you heard his voice say, "Is broken. Contact janitor if you need to get through. Okay. This whole area, for some reason, looks like an old hotel. But what happens Real if we just quick, try to just pass just through? Close to it. Jack, do you have to do something by 11? Uh, oh, yeah. yes, but I'm kind of just waiting on a phone call from them. Got it. Just want to make sure. So uh, what if I told you this thing, this ashtray, is the source of all this nonsense? Elaborate. Uh, the ashtray is an object of power, and it creates this maze. Only the person bound to the ashtray normally can navigate the maze. Okay. Otherwise you just get spit back out of the front. So we have to contact Ati. Yeah, hey, so, about this maze in a hotel room. Oh, it's just the ashtray. Destroy it. Uh, I'm sorry, the what? No, no, we can't just destroy the ashtray. Uh, but no, Ati said contact janitor if you need to get through. So we're going to go to Ati's office. Oh, that doesn't seem good. Did the room just come? I remember this part. Um, what is going on? What is going on here? Now what the gosh darn heck is going on out there? Being shot at? 
That guy's moving really quickly. I should find the others. Oh, gosh. Oh, old friends. Yeah, Arisha's former ranger team have gone missing, and the basic revelation is they've all been turned into his. Oh, you found them! Yeah. Oh. oh, let me just. Oh, I'm not gonna do these just Joe yet, Young but reference. let's. Ju you found me. No, Ati. God damn it, Jack! I was trying not to. Where is he? Well, he told you before. He's on vacation. Now this boy left. Said the son of Anikidati. My Are we just going to go to his vacation? No. We're not going to bother him on his vacation. Hey, do you guys have Amazon Prime, like, video? Lomely Lumps, Holiday Hops. Uh, I think so. I have Amazon Prime, I know that. Oh no, they're calling me again. So there's a really good documentary you guys should check out on it. Um, it's the Tony Hawk Pro Skater documentary. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm just going to mute myself. And I'll take this phone call. I think it's going to be a mistake. Do it, do it, do it. I can't mute myself. Just hit the button on your hey, controller. Cool. You can do that. Just <laughs> Here I am. Here I am. Good old, good old time. <laughs> <laughs> What's that dang cook bit? Oh, God bless you. Um, I'm an atheist. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I hope you Fuck get you to then. Tree, then you... I hope you get. I hope you get. I hope you turn. I hope you reincarnate as a tree. Come back. Someone chops you down and turns into a fucking Bible. Ati sending visions from his vacation. We must follow them. The only funny bit Dane Cook has ever done, and he still probably stole from somebody else. <laughs> I was watching just because like my parents were watching Hawaii Five O. So my girlfriend and I were watching it with them, and Dane Cook is in that show apparently. Huh. Like, I oh. was right. <laughs> Dane Cook is here. The first thing I opened up my phone to is my brother saying I love you in a one voice, and I was immediately was like, you're all uh, drunk, aren't you? You're <laughs> all drunk. And then they were you're, trying you're to get me signs something. that they're going to you're, pick me up. And I'm like, like alright. I'm sorry, Tim, you can continue your story. He's just like, he's saying he loves me, something's wrong. <laughs> he would never say that out loud. He would call me an asshole first. <laughs> Oh fuck, I forgot about these things. They're definitely gonna kill me. I told you guys, um, a little while back I went to visit my brother, and... Cause I, I also went to my brother's place, just unannounced, like, hey, I'm here! And my brother and his wife were telling me, like, you're, you're like our Kramer. You're, you're, you're like Kramer from Seinfeld. Anyway, guys, I should tell you all, I'm, I'm gonna be going to the lab factory soon. That joke is so not funny if you don't get the reference, and if you get really the reference, isn't. it's really not funny. Shit. Ah, oh, fuck. Goddamn mold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Man, he's How scored even... all over you. What is Kramer's actor's actual name? I don't know. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. He's Kramer. Hold on. Is George George? Okay, I, I, I'm just gonna. No, that's uh, well, that's Jason Alexander. I'm just gonna come back to these guys later. Michael Richards, that's his name. One, two, three. Does anyone ever check in here? Like, what if this is the one time you walk in and somebody's already here? Well, the jo there was a joke earlier where when you came through, someone was outside the building trying to get, like, ask if they were open. <laughs> I presume it's one of those things where this place moves around constantly. But also, yeah. the radio is... Ati guided us here, so now the radio is in Finnish and all the tourism posters are for Finland. So we're in the right direction. 
So, there's oh. an old... There's a, this son actually. of a bitch. It's the clog. He's in the motel. That's disgusting. Anyway. Just, just leave him alone. Just let him be. So, there's an old MasterCard commercial that stars the pufferfish from, um... Dark Tale. Sykes. Yeah, Martin Scorsese, that guy. Uh, Martin Scorsese fish, yes. No, oh, no, no. It, it's literally just Martin Scorsese in a MasterCard commercial. And he's, oh. he's at, like, um... He did like like a, a like one of those one hour photo type booths where you send them your fucking film and then they just print out all the photos for you. And he's just looking through all of the pictures. He goes, "Oh, this is this is terribly shot. I don't know who the fuck did this." <laughs> and he like takes a Mastercard. I goes, "I need you to fix this real quick." Right, we like, fixed. We synced up all the radios and drove the clog out of the motel. Dang. Took six radios. Oh, you missed one. No, that's you know, Pete. that's just the bell at the desk <laughs> to open Not up the different the rooms. No, no, no. Like, that that was later. There was a radio in the room you could. Well, not to not to quote a random trailer that just dropped this week. You know. I'm something of a person who was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. Stop. Hold Heaven on. doesn't fit this joke. I picked up the key, didn't I? Oh, you didn't turn on the last radio? Go into the back into the room. Oh, in the... Oh, hold on. Oh, no. Do you guys want to watch a... Do you guys uh, want to watch a Marx mean. Brothers comedy with me? No, I can't I'm turn sorry, that one I'm on. Spacing. But again, I definitely picked up the. Is it always um, the black triangle door? Well, I checked the other doors too, and it didn't let me. Um, the other odd thing is normally the key appears in the third room, but this time it appeared in the first after I drove the clog out. Huh. Oh wait, I remember now. We gotta go into the janitor's office. Wow. Oh, he has his own room. That's One, nice. two, three. Oh. We're in the quarry now. Visions of a tea. Something. Sorry, I'm watching a fight video at a gas station, and this motherfucker just pulled a real ass MMA move on this random guy. Yeah. Oh, shit. My coworker was trying to tell Pete, convince, was reading a Tumblr post where it's like, man, you know, if it doesn't necessarily specify that you have to be a human to run for president, like if a dog was 35, then, um,. Then um, they could run for president. So that's, that's a very a large if, if, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then my coworker is like, the turtles live to thirty-five. I'm like, we already have Mitch McConnell. Just leave him. <laughs> <laughs> also, really You're not quick. wrong. That that no. broke her. That actually physically broke my coworker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't blame him. Just bust out laughing. <laughs> So, unrelated. So, yesterday was the anniversary, or more so, it's the, it was the day that Zach and Cody were supposed to make it into that Italian restaurant that they had to wait 15 years to get a reservation oh, yeah. for. Uh, Dylan and book. Cole, Dylan and Cole did not do anything to actually celebrate that joke. <laughs> yeah, okay, understandable, because like, why would they remember that? They forgot their appointment. <laughs> But like, man, could you imagine if Dylan and Cole just sat together at an Italian restaurant and posted a tweet about it on that exact day? Look, my soul's already full of disappointments. Don't let, don't let me be reminded of them. It would be so hilarious if they showed up at the exact same set and did the thing again. Look, all I'd say is... I don't know if they came through the mic or not. It didn't. 
I just heard it very was, late uh, It was from the bear, bear in the big blue house. Like, I think Hunter's pretty tired, don't you? And then, well. <laughs> yeah. I think Cutter is looking pretty tired, don't you? I can't fix those people in this house who are sleeping. Oh, that's horrifying. I'm looking at like a, one of those deep sea sharks, like one of those like, oh. sharks. Like, is it a Greenland the shark? The one with the extended is it a jaw. Shark? Oh no, you're talking about a goblin shark. Yeah, that's horrifying. Yeah, goblin oh sharks God. are fucking weird as hell. I love them. It, it, it's the way like the jaw like shoots out. I was gonna say like, they no, got a full no. xenomorph jaw. It's fucking weird. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. No, well, someone had to do it eventually. Some animal had to evolve for that. I mean, they're not even the first ones. Moray eels also can do that, more or less. Eels, yeah, eels aren't real. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. This uh -oh. really. This recent article from the hard drive is really sad. Only 9% of voters think Joe Biden could defeat John Cena and The Undertaker in, in a triple threat match at WrestleMania. This is just sad. What, what, what no is, faith in our country? president. Where's my country gone? Exactly. Actually, if, if, if we were being very serious, uh, Undertaker would have squashed both of them. At WrestleMania? Are you shitting me? Yep. That was like, that was he like wouldn't even Undertaker. undertake them. He'd just like punch them once and they'd fall over. Well, yeah, then you just fucked up. Actually, I set it up for this anyway. Oh. Um. <laughs> I don't know if that fart came through the mic. It did. It unfortunately it did. We were hoping no. not to call attention to it since you were in distress the last time we did. <laughs> Mostly because the last one was really bad. We've entered nowhere. I love it. It's freaky and it's cool. I always wanted to be... Wait, with our husband used this bad? <laughs> no, that's the middle of nowhere. We've just entered nowhere. Oh. Got it, got it. Okay, so we won't be seeing them for a while. That would no. be crazy. That would be a crazy crossover if we ever got it. <clears throat> Return the slab. Welcome so, to nowhere. So, Kevin, uh, The Undertaker, um, fun fact. Uh, the Undertaker went 21-0 and 0 at WrestleMania, the... The annual big show of the year for the WWE. Mm -hmm. So it was like a big thing, like every year. It's like, oh, will someone beat the streak for the against the Undertaker? Ooh, it could be this year. It, it, it did happen eventually. Pretty, pretty blamely, the match itself was pretty bad. Um, it, it wasn't the choice of opponent. It was just the match itself did not work out, and oof. That was not how we wanted it to end. Oh, there you go, Kevin. There's the finished tango. That was a that song was a finished song that's title translates to "Heroes Tango." Oh, interesting. The Heroes Tango. That Again, sounds... it, it like the heavily the heavy implication if you like look into like the notes and other stuff about him is that Ati is like an old Finnish water god. Ah, uh, yes, that explains all the water. Well, right now Infinite. there's so much. Right now there's so much water because he's at the sauna for his vacation. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we're we're getting him back from his vacation. That's no, no, fuck no. He's not coming back from his vacation for this shit. He's just gonna have something passed on to us. Okay. But also, um, just look at these beautiful shots of Finland. Yeah. Wow. Look at these trees. Wait, are these the Blair Witch Project trees? <laughs> no. Well. No, because you're thinking of the Pine Bear. No, actually, what am I saying? No, you're not. For a Finn, holiday is holy. Perkily. Wow, now look you know, at that Jack, sunset we're walking into. You know, Jack, this makes me want to sing my own song right now, real quick. Oh, hold on. Cutscene. Did you miss me? 
<laughs> you have this in your song. <laughs> no, 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 no. But no this in your sock? You did good. Again. He... Player. You can it. <laughs> the song is a present from my friends to you. Uh, you I don't, don't want to do my so bit during this. The song is a present from his friends to us. Real Which quick. Real quick. <laughs> but real, oh look at this! Adi set up a control point with like fucking random shit from his janitor's cart. <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh, before we get into the music here, real quick, Jack, I want to sing a quick song for myself. Oh boy. Deeper, deeper, home, see. Why did my brother uh, text me? I'm good. Oh wait, no, never mind. Remember my... how the song goes. But uh. <laughs> Dad, do you know? Do you remember Seabird? Not especially. Oh, you don't remember that song from Spider-Man Two? Oh. Seabird, Seabird. Nah. <laughs> You're fucking with me, right? I I really don't. The Howard mission. Oh um, fuck. <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking Tobey Maguire Spider-Man Two. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. All right, middle song. Let's go. Well, we, we're, we're not there yet. We got to get back to uh, the entrance first. Wait, is that even going to play because we have copyright music turned off? <laughs> yeah. I hope so, only because it was written by the, like, it was, like, made by the people for the game. Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, it's people. weird because it's the same thing with Persona 5 where I'll get copyright struck, but nothing happens. I really hope it does, because this is one of the coolest fucking moments in the game. Okay. I mean, I loved it, personally. But no, Ati has given us his tape uh, player, which will allow us to navigate the maze. But again, I just love this revelation that you're shown here, that Ati is indeed one of the most powerful beings in the Bureau. The janitor. Yes. Oh wait, is it just gonna play an instrumental version? Or maybe it's just waiting for me to... I can't remember if it's just synced up to, like, locational cues, or if it's... Nope, there's the lyrics. This part, this is usually the coolest part of the game, if I'm being honest. Uh, with that, I am gonna leave the at this bathroom. I don't know how much longer we have. Good night, boys. Good night. Monster Zinc, chill out. Oh, they didn't want us to go that way. Sorry to interrupt the grooves, but... One second, let me, um...
I see. God damn it. Oh, that's what being shot will do to you. Well, getting fucking oh, sideswiped by a rocket, yeah. I know it's kind of lame after we already gave people a taste of it, but I actually might stop this here just because, like Tim said, I am expecting a text saying I need to give someone a ride any minute now, and I'd rather stop before we go in again rather than halfway. All right, well, we'll rock on... No, oh, my God, I almost died. We'll rock on next time. No, that no, would have been a either. tragic end to the stream. Jesus. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>